everybody and welcome back to The Hobby Musician. On today's practice vlog, I wanna give you a peek behind the curtain of a current project that I'm working on. Now to set the stage, not too long ago, a few app developers actually reached out to me and asked me if I'd be interested in composing and recording some background music for a new puzzle game that they're developing. And when they kind of described the project, I was really intrigued, so of course I said yes. And as things started to unfold, they explained that in their ultimate design of the game, they're envisioning having a whole bunch of individual separate levels that a player uh, would be working on, and they want different pieces of background music for each of the levels. They want them to have their own style, their own vibe. And so I kind of thought this might make a good mini series here in the practice vlog um, subsection of our channel. So each time we do one of these, I want to take you behind and show you some of my approaches for how to compose original music specifically for this, um, I guess, purpose. Now we've done uh, episodes before on our channel about background music and the thing to keep in mind is that you have to walk a fine line. When you're writing new music, you want it to be interesting and engaging, but you have to be careful. If the purpose of the music is to be background, you don't want to get it to be too interesting but you also can't have it just be completely boring because either end of the spectrum will kind of take the listener out of the element. So today's episode, we're gonna focus on the primary most important one. We're gonna talk about main menu music. This is gonna be composing a song that can be playing in the background when a user first opens up the puzzle game and is starting to decide which levels they wanna pick. Okay, I'm gonna get things set up in the background and we're gonna start building this and I wanna show you my process of how to layer by layer start to build up an original song idea. All right, everybody, I'm back. And in the background, I've got uh, kind of a blank garage band session opened uh, because this is kind of one of my techniques is a lot of times when I'm trying to think through a new song idea, I'll lay down individual parts and then just listen to them and, and using kind of software like a garage band or a logic or whatever it is you might have um, is an easy way to do that. Now, when I was talking to the developers about what style and kind of music they would like, they gave me some notes and I wanted to make sure that I, I was asking questions like, do you want it to be you know, fast or soft or slow? And for the main menu music, they actually gave me three words, only three words. These were the notes that they gave me for what they wanted it to sound like. They wanted it to be happy, bouncy, and light. So with only that to go on, my mind immediately started to kind of gravitate towards things. Now, when they talked about happy, um, I started thinking about key signatures and chord types and things like that. And to me, a lot of music that people might generally call happy sounding music is gonna be a lot of major chords. I'm not gonna worry too much about minors and trying to get different modes and stuff in there. I'm thinking major chords, open chords, and probably major scales. Now, the, the note about being light initially drew me towards acoustic kind of sounding music. To me, when I think of heavy versus light, I think you know heavy could be really distorted guitars, lots of amps, lots of effects, but light stuff is gonna be acoustic guitars, you know, kind of little uh, coffee house vibes. Now you can see I am holding an electric guitar, but I'm using my Variax guitar today because in sessions like this, I'm just trying to get ideas. The Variax guitar, this is a modeling guitar, so I can actually pull up and I have um, pulled up. <laughs> I've just pulled up an acoustic model so that I can quickly kind of hear the general vibe of what an acoustic guitar would sound like. So if I record it and later if I don't like the actual sound, I can pull out a real acoustic and do it for, for the good take uh, at that point. Now the last idea, the last note, this bouncy idea, I really started to think about um, when I think bouncy, I like playing with drum patterns and beats that have almost two overlapping things. I like beats that have an kind of overarching slower vibe where like a one and a three, you can kind of bounce back and forth, but then there might be little things in between that kind of drive the beat along. So when I think bouncy, that's kind of what I'm going with. And in the background, I was just scrolling through some um, pre-programmed drum beats to kind of get an idea of where to start. And this is gonna be, and I'll play for you, uh, what I just put down as something to work with. 
Now, a quick note about the sound. Right now, in this portion of the video, you're just hearing um, what I'm hearing out of the studio monitors being picked up by this mic. Um, but at the end of the video, and if you want to skip ahead, use the chapters down below, I'm going to mix this all and you'll be able to hear kind of the better quality sound. But we're just in the note phase. I'm just playing with ideas. So that's what you're hearing. So this is kind of the drum beat that I, I ended up on just trying to put down for a first idea. And you can hear in these accents, be, between the accents is a lot of space. But in between the accents are the lower um, beats. And it kind of just naturally makes you want to bounce back and forth. So that's really what I started with. And then as I was thinking about happy chords, things like that, I'm thinking open chords. So I just picked like a key of A to start in. And I'm just thinking the, the ones, the fours, and the fives. So in the key of A, if you think of A and you assign it the number one, and then you just go in, in notes of the scale, A, B, C, D, D would be number four. And then right after D, number five would be E. So A, D, and E. I just kind of started with those chords. So. something like that and just to to go with the drum beat back and forth like that so what i'm going to do now i'm going to get that play with the drum beat just as far as a bed of things to um, work on top of i'm going to get that laid down and i'll come back and we'll start thinking about some other parts all right, I got that part laid down. So uh, we right now we just have kind of that initial drum beat and then we've got that chord progression we were just talking about. So right now it kind of sounds like this. Right, so already we're, it's starting to get a little bouncy. But as I was doing that, as I was putting down that chord progression, I had the thought that it might be nice to now come back and add some um, what I call like interest. One of the techniques that you can use if you're writing original music, if you want to add some depth or some just sonically acoustic or, or interesting sounds, is you can then add back in different versions of some of the same chords that you're playing. And in our particular case, I kind of decided I wanted to do some triads uh, with higher voiced um, chords to play along with it. And in particular, you know, we're talking about using this A. So we've got the A chord. This is an open A, you know, kind of the traditional way to play it. We have our D and our E. Those were our three main chords that we were targeting for this. Well, I can change where I play some of those notes. And if I play these three in a higher voice, um, these are just three notes out of the A chord. So it's still an A chord, but it's in a different register. And if we take that same idea, those next two are just other versions of a D and an E. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try to put down kind of the same, that same almost pattern, just with some of these different voicings. So I'm gonna get that laid down and we'll come back and keep building up this song. All right, everybody, I just now got that part recorded. So now we currently have kind of our drum beat as the first layer. We have the open chords as our second layer. And now we've got this little triad kind of alternate voiced chords as a third layer. And so it's starting to sound a little bit like this. Still pretty simple, I'll grant you that. But as I was putting that down, the next phase, the next piece that I wanna talk about is I'm gonna incorporate a technique that I've been doing now for a number of years, and I really make an effort to kind of put this into most of my projects. I wanna start thinking about doing some double tracking. Now, if you Google this, the basic idea of double tracking is that when recording artists are you know, starting to put down parts like we're doing today, play a verse, play a chorus, to double track something, you would just have yourself play, start to finish a whole section, the whole verse. Then you would save that and then separately open up a brand new track that's empty and literally record yourself performing that same chunk again. But due to the fact that we're all human beings, 
those two performances, even if you try to make them identical, there will end up being minute differences, very subtle nuances between the two parts. And then if you go to play it back to the listener and you include that in the final mix song, even taking advantage of some things like hard panning one to the left and hard panning one to the right, you can create a real depth and richness to the sound that is slightly different than just playing one performance twice as loud. So as I was recording the triads, you know, in that part that we just recorded, I started to think to myself, I want to do a double track. I want to record myself playing um, mostly all the same things, but I'm going to specifically make a choice in the double tracking. I'm going to change, intentionally change one of them. So instead of playing um, our ascending triads, so there's our A, there's our D, and there's our E. In the double track, I'm going to play the A, same A, same D, and I'm going to go down to play the final E. So while one track is playing the E up here, the other track is going to be playing the E uh, down there. And I'm just using different fingerings to get that. So I'm simultaneously using some double tracking ideas along with intentional changes so that when it comes out in the final mix, left and right, you'll hear it, it'll just sound like there are more guitar players playing because, I don't know, philosophically, there are more guitar players playing. All right, so I'm going to get that recorded, and then we'll come back and keep layering it up, and then it'll be time to think about some melodies. Okay, everybody, now we're at the point in the process that, you know, at least my process, that I like to get this kind of bed of chords, you know, simple chords down and recorded like we've been doing, because now I want to spend some time, I want to think about melodic lines. And you can play any number of notes over any number of chords, but for me, I like, this is just my process. Different people do it different ways, but sometimes I like to be able to play this, you know, chord progression just on a loop. And then I can mess around, I can improvise, and then right when I like something, right when I stumble upon something I like, then I'm already at the computer and I can start a new track and record it right then. So, as I finished recording that just now, I put it on loop, so I wanted to have some ideas before I came back and talked through it. So here we're going to focus back on the word light. Um, when the developers were kind of giving me those notes, not only did I think about acoustic guitar, you know, just choices, but I also thought lightness can apply to how many notes you play. Different genres of music kind of have different feelings and vibes, partially, by the number of notes. If you kind of listen to like prog metal these days, it's just a lightning blur of notes one right after the other. But for our light, happy, bouncy piece, I wanted to intentionally keep the number of notes low. I want to like find notes, hold them, and then only play a couple notes to get to the next note, that kind of thing. So just now as I had the... Uh, um, track going, I just started to realize I want something in a higher register. So if we're in the key of A, you know, there's my low A, um, and then if I, if I take that up an octave, I can start here. I can just use some pentatonic scales, major scales, the, the happier sounding ones. And from there, I wanted to highlight, I, I like the sound of highlighting the fifth note. So if, if this is our A, There's our fifth note, and that's that's a really nice interval uh, to the ear. So um, one of the ideas it came up with was just really focusing and holding on that fifth note. So something, you know, um, if you're like one, two, three, four. Just a little line like that to go over, you know, this... You know, something like that really suits all of these notes that I'm trying to accomplish. It's There's um, space in between the notes I'm choosing, and I'm holding notes uh, on the longer end of things and trying not to play too many notes in between. So with a melody like that, what I want to do is I'm, I want to get that recorded underneath this. And then the last thing I'm going to do, 
Um, I'll kind of fast forward through, you know, the, the other parts of the process. But what I do is I then repeat everything we've done section after section. I would consider all of this work to be like section one or section A. And then I'm going to go through every step of the process again for like a B section where we change instead of the... Instead of those open chords, well then maybe we go to a bridge or a chorus. And we, we include some more chords to break up that listener, to break up the experience of listening uh, into that. So um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to record the melody. And then what are we going to do to end this video? I'm then going to mix this all nicely. And the next thing you see is going to be kind of a final performance of me playing the melody that we have um, nicely mixed so you're not listening through the studio monitors anymore. But before we do that, I just hope you got something out of this process. Uh, maybe there's something or a technique you can use in your own songwriting journey. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, play on, my friends. Play on.